Today, New York Magazine ran a hit piece on Andrew Huberman. Andrew Huberman is a neurobiologist from Stanford who has gotten famous over the last couple of years because he has helped millions of people get healthy. Now, the hit piece was not about how he's convinced millions of Americans to quit drinking alcohol or how he's explained the dangers of using tobacco or how he's explained the importance of exercise or how he's disseminated the information of how getting sunlight in your eyes and regulating your circadian rhythm is crucial for your health. Rather, the hit piece is about his private life. They dig into to his private life and his relationships with women. They do this to try to frame Andrew Huberman in a negative light. I think this is extremely disgusting and let me know if you agree with me on this. What Andrew Huberman does in his public life is he puts out a podcast and he puts out tons of information on how to improve your health. And let me know below if Andrew Huberman has helped your health in any way because he certainly has helped mine. Once that flame starts to burn very bright, they have no other choice. They have nothing to attack but his personal life. It is insane to me that they ran this piece and it seems to me they're just trying to tear down somebody who has helped so many people with their health. Me personally, I don't care what Andrew Huberman does in his private life. I can watch any podcast I want and I choose to watch his because it contains really valuable information about subjects that I am interested in. I am not going to this guy for relationship advice or how I should treat women in my private life and he doesn't talk about that. I think it's disgusting what we do nowadays, prying apart people's private lives. And I really question why New York Magazine would run this piece. Most of the funding for mainstream media comes from the pharmaceutical industry. It also comes from processed food companies. Right <laughs> below that is alcohol companies. Here you have somebody who has gained fame and gained millions of listeners. And what does he say? Eat real food. Don't drink alcohol. Tobacco is bad for you. And he is making a giant impact. He sold out an arena in Australia. Consumers are beginning to vote with their dollar. And when something becomes such a big threat to their bottom line, they will do what they need to do to destroy that person. So I stand with Dr. Hugh Huberman. Let me know if you do below. Keep in mind that he has broke no laws. All the stuff that they said in his personal life, there's no law. All right, let's keep okay. going. First yeah. of all, that's a, drinking that's game, new drinking over. game. Every time he says personal life, I want you to take a shot because he said that like 25 times. Sure. Yeah. Every well, single time. Well, what, what's your opinion home? on this? I, I, I know you're not hu super familiar with Andrew Huberman, but what, what do you think about this whole situation? So just so we can back up, Andrew Huberman does a podcast on medicine. I've seen mm -hmm. all his stuff. For like, sure. Mm -hmm. Like sporadically, but, it'll but come up he, on my feed. But he doesn't hit you up about dating advice. Why does that matter if he's doing abusive things behind closed doors? Yeah, no, it wasn't abusive. It's that he was seeing multiple women at the same time. time. Yeah. The oh. article that I saw said that he was abusive. What, what do you mean? Like physically abusive? It didn't say. That's what I was telling you at the yeah, beginning. Did, it I was did. very vague. It said mm -hmm. that he was very um, disloyal and unfaithful. Okay. And that he was b abusive. Literally the word abusive I, I, behind I, closed okay, doors. I, I didn't see anything it's in, probably in, mental. In, implying that yeah. he I'm sure he hit like anyone. verbal abuse or whatever. But regardless, what he does in his private life is just like any other celebrity or any other person on the planet. Just because you do something good in the front line and you show that you're a good person or giving advice or sure. helpful does not mean that behind closed doors you get to be a monster. Okay, right. So so just consider in other situations when you're supposed to have investigative journalism, you should get multiple sources, right? Correct. Yes, absolutely. So they substantiated nothing of what he they, these women said. He just talked to six women who said that we were dating him at different times, and some of them say we're dating con concurrently. When they asked Andrew Huberman, he said, "I was stopping. I was not seeing this girl at this time or whatever." So they haven't got his side of the story at all. So and why is this even news then? Oh, it's because it's one of the biggest stories it's in the world. One of the biggest stories on there. Yeah, I think, I think it's because okay. of how famous he is. Yeah, of I think like oh, yeah. him him bringing in, you know, new fans and. And bringing in money, money monetizing, no tobacco, no alcohol, you know, that's a big thing. So, of course, they're going to put a negative light on that and try to dim his light, try to take that away from him because, yeah. you know, the media doesn't like that. The media wants to focus on the negative stuff. Yeah, and if they know? take it away from, like, you know, like the tobacco and alcohol and everything, like, they're getting a loss financially. Yeah, right. So. And that's why he was saying, like, the voters, how he's getting, you know, he's, he's bringing in a different level of of health and wealth he, he's and like they don't like that but but the thing is when you read the article there's a few things that are very terrifying about it number one the article begins about by talking about the fact that he does give good advice mm -hmm. he yeah. really does when something's his opinion he says his opinion when something's a medical fact he talks about that but people are saying because he has he's a doctorate of neurology he can't talk about cold plunges like what the fuck are you talking about like it's ridiculous like that is one of the criticisms that i hear none of the criticisms are actually about the advice that he gives i mean there's some vague ones that are in there the majority of the criticism is about the fact that these six women said that they, he was dating them at the same time Wait, say it again mm -hmm. who cares yeah, exactly that's my point. Like, who cares? and so like, many people out there do that that's his private that life I know. 
know. Okay. It's his private, so, so let so him have that. Can we pull this up real quick? I want to show you guys something. And maybe they want exclusive. I mean, well, here it oh, is. Stop, stop. Can you stop it real quick? New York go Magazine. To the beginning. Okay, let's go back to the beginning. Real quick, with this, real, real quick, remember what he remember what he said? What were the reasons? Who was the main people uh, behind uh, advertising? Anybody? Big Pharma. Big Pharma. Big Pharma. Big processed foods. Big food. Okay. And then I want you to pay attention to this woman right here who looks like she's had a bit of processed foods. <laughs> and then listen, let's listen to what she has That's to say here. She, she needs well, a plunge. Well, here it is. New York Magazine putting out this big expose on Dr. Andrew Huberman. And it's not good. And you know what else I want to say? Let the record show. For years on here, I have been calling out this guy, saying he's a little bit grifty. I have been noting some of the things that are in the article about what is actually his area of expertise. What is actually this lab? What? It's all in the article. A lot of the stuff that I talked about two years ago, more than two years ago, is in this article. And I got so much crap, in particular from men being like, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know anything, da 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 kind of seems like I did know some stuff. Do I know everything? No. Does this man seem like a deceitful, manipulative POS? Yes. I do wish, though, that the article focused a little bit more on how he really tries to brand himself as this expert in everything. Like, I have a video up about how when he does his, like, you know, is alcohol bad for you episode. Is alcohol bad for you? He pulls from a study... Uh, that links Definitely. breast cancer and um, alcohol consumption. But it's from 1987. And I've talked to a few people who have said, like, yeah, you really, like, shouldn't, like, actively be pulling the data from that at this point. Because, like, now we have all these genetic markers, et cetera. Um, and then another thing I would say is, like, you know, I did another one where I showed how, like, he was like, oh, okay, like, we're going to call, like, people are saying moderately running on a treadmill, so I'm going to call that, and, like, he used his own terminology and then based his own theory off the terminology he uses. No, wow, that's, that's so actually damning. not how you oh, do, no. like, actual studies. Anyway, all of this to say, read the article. Oh, okay, Huberman. now we're hey, hey guys, ready? Oh, I'm gonna, sure. ready here, watch here. I'm going to point at someone who didn't here. read the fucking article the because the article had nothing to do with her, his fucking medical advice. It had to do with him dating six women at once, and she didn't bring that up once. I just, again, normally I would never make remarks about someone's physical appearance. I just think it's funny that a woman with a jiggly chin is sitting there talking about how he's talking about you shouldn't drink alcohol and running on a treadmill. No shit, Karen. No shit. No I wonder you don't fucking like Stop that. Stop it. What? I, you said she has a jiggly chin. Then, then whatever. I don't. Got, I, don't care. I don't care. Like, like normally I would never make a comment about that, but it's just so apparent when you heard the previous one. Yes, people who process foods. Like again, the mainstream. Um, Big uh, uh, the the food industrial complex. They don't like it when people come out there and tell you to eat paleo, eat real food, stay away from junk food. Yeah. Go again, again. Do you, you want to know another one? TRT, testosterone replacement mm. therapy. Go to the gym. Cause why? Cause now I don't need Xanax anymore. Mm-hmm. Now I don't need an erectile dysfunction pill anymore. <laughs> I don't watch porn anymore, so I don't need an ED fucking pill anymore. Oh, you're kidding me. I don't need to fucking, oh, I can sleep because I go to the gym every day and eat properly. So now I don't need your fucking sleeping pills anymore. Mm-hmm. You're kidding me. I can actually fix these problems on my own. L- yeah. Let me see. Is there a source on here? What's the number one source on the fucking internet for that type of information? It's that podcast. Mm-hmm. And then I see this woman with her fucking jiggly chin sitting there talking about, <laughs> well, he's made an excuse about walking on a train treadmill are you out of your fucking mind because you want to know who doesn't walk on a treadmill i can tell you right now guys listen listen to me i i love like again i get this thing you know it's like oh drink red wine before you go to bed because there's antioxidants eat some fucking broccoli they have antioxidants i don't mind if anyone drinks just stop telling me it's good for you because it's fucking not yeah. okay mm-hmm. that's the part that's there's so other crazy ways to, to get your antioxidants but, but my, my point is did this woman at any point talk you heard it at the end he goes i really wish they had gone into more about him being a grifter they didn't because he's not a grifter because you weren't Weren't right, Karen. That's the problem. Karen. And that shit made me so angry when I saw this. Because here's the thing. I feel bad initially because I, I hate the fact that we're even talking about this. Because Andrew Huberman is worth more than probably, as far as his podcast is concerned, he's helped more people. If I was going to say Lex Friedman, Joe Rogan, whatever, Logan Paul, whoever, whoever the biggest podcasters are, he's helped more people as far as being a popular podcast. I, you could possibly say than anyone in the world. 
and you're trying to tear this dude down yeah. and just not get his side of the story. Again, he is not Wait, giving me fucking dating not, advice. Why has he not um, commented on anything that's been reported? I'm going to ask you a question. No, so uh, I don't know. He has. He, he, he had uh, he I, I don't know, somebody in his, I don't know if it was a PR agent or whatever, his personal team denoted that in, there in a couple of cases that the women said that they were dating him at a certain time. And he's like, we weren't together. Ladies, have you ever dated a guy and not exclusively and then it got exclusive? Yes. And then for a while it wasn't exclusive again? Yes. So that's mm -hmm. happened before. Where like you guys are like move, moves out of your apartment, but you're still sleeping together and it's not exclusive. But you used to be exclusive. So, and then you find out he's seeing someone else and then you get angry. That could happen. Yeah. That actually could happen. We have no context to know what was because going on in that situation. Because private life. We don't know those personal things. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's outside looking in. So why are we defining this no. person by that no, stuff, Define this person. Right? How about at the end of the article when all six of the girls are in a group chat together? Yeah. Get the fuck out of here, dude. Are you kidding me? This is like terrifying to me. Like we're getting into this point where it's like, this seems totally normal. And it's not because remember, we went after, remember the media went after Tiger Woods because Tiger Woods, what do he do? He cheated on his wife with Denny's waitresses and fucking porn stars. <laughs> yes. That's why we had a problem with it because he cheated on his wife. But what did we say about Derek Jeter? Does anyone remember? We said nothing when he was fucking Jessica Biel and Jessica Alba and Mariah Carey. We said nothing. What happened with George Clooney? What did we say about George Clooney? We said nothing. Nothing. We didn't say shit about Magic Johnson. We didn't say say. We didn't say about any of these fucking dudes. We didn't say anything. You want to know why? Because they weren't they were married. Married. And now we just dropped the bar. You don't even have to fucking be married anymore. Right. What a horrible how he cheated mm -hmm. on his wife. Wait a second. He's not even fucking married. That's the part that's so Let crazy. Let me see if I can give you some context here. Okay. So Andrew Huberman is how old now? 49? Uh, 48, 49. 48, 49. Yeah. Okay. Jacked. Yeah. Good looking, Looks really good, good yeah. looking guy. Like takes care of himself. Obviously, ha has a PhD in something. I think he has two PhDs. Okay, yeah. Okay, so the guy is a at Stanford. Okay, so that's the other thing. Guy is the definition of a high value dude. Let's just yeah. be honest here. Okay, I don't mm -hmm. know how tall is he. Probably taller than me. Taller Just than matter. Yeah, it Tall, makes a difference. He, he, he's, yeah. he's got enough uh, podcast subs to not right. make so, up for yeah, being exactly. five foot yeah. two. He's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. He's, he makes he makes up for. It. Anyways, uh, I would or, I would say okay. Then the other part is never been married. No kids, correct? Because I know he was wanting. The, the article itself said he was trying to. He wanted to have kids. That was one of his future his future goals or whatever. At forty eight years old, right? So, by all measurements, this guy is the ideal mate for the women that are like now complaining about this yes. guy because, according to the article. He had a quote unquote type. Okay. Yeah. That type was anywhere in the late thirties to early forties. Okay. She had to be educated. She had to have sort of, you know, sort of like take care of herself into, into paleo or whatever, you know, taking cold plunges, whatever, doing having something that is so, you know, uh com compatible with him. How right? much you want to make about the woman who wrote the article is also in that certain that same oh, demographic. Definitely mm -hmm. when I show you the next video, we can, like, we, can still single? we can confirm that. We will, <laughs> right. we will well, confirm well, that in the next my video. Question, I, have, I have a question. Yeah. I just have to say something. <clears throat> Huberman? Huberman. 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 Okay. So based on the description you're giving me, mm -hmm. if you're gonna date this guy, you have to know what you're signing up. Right. For. That's okay. Exactly so, so, where so, so, I mean, so, like, but hold on. But let's talk about that... this. I agree with you, and I also like, it, you, ladies. You ever met a male stripper or a DJ or a fucking VIP host who lies about fucking multiple? And has that ever happened to you? Ladies, raise your fucking hand. You live in Las Vegas. <laughs> Stop <laughs> keeping your hand down. I'm dating him, but I know. Okay. 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 But you know what I'm talking <laughs> about. Terrible. It happens. Whoever, it, do you this, shit, this shit happens all the time. <laughs> I want you to consider this, though, right? <laughs> I, I want you to consider this. Those guys, they know what they're doing because they probably, ladies, be real. You ha or a friend have a at least know one guy you've been with that has a hundred body count. Oh my god, yeah, yeah, absolutely sure. more. All of them. Oh yeah, 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 okay, cool. Definitely. Got it. You just, all right, cool. <laughs> Those guys know what they're talking about. Andrew Huberman grew up, or he at least was studying in a part of the world where some of the most hideous women in the country live, which is the northern part of California. Right. And when, while he's there, there's, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just telling you guys, it's like fucking 17 dudes for every girl, and the guys are rich. And, and so he, he lives there. He's studying for two PhDs, and then he has a girlfriend. Now, just imagine if you have a girlfriend. The guys who are watching this, you're totally going to be able to follow along. Maybe some of you ladies won't. You have a girlfriend. This is the hottest girl you've ever been with in your life. Then all of a sudden... You get 4 million people following you on fucking YouTube. And women come up to you that are hotter than any woman you've ever seen in your life just ready to have sex with you. Now, I know, I know, I know. It's so terrible. None of you ladies could possibly imagine why any guy would ever do that. But there's no dude out there who's listening to this is like, yeah, I kind of get it. Like, mm. again, And by the way, you can also cheat and not be a narcissist. Women cheat, and I don't think they're narcissists just because they cheat. You just found something better. You weren't getting what you needed out of a relationship. Men can cheat, and that doesn't make them narcissists. There is nothing about this article. He's done mm -hmm. so much to help other people. That is not 
That is not the the activity of a narcissist. Mm -hmm. So that's why I have a big I'm problem. I'm confused with this. as so. to what. I don't, what what is the the picture that you're trying to paint that we don't need to label him because of what he does behind closed doors, it, 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 or that we don't know enough to accuse him so, of anything? So, yes. Like, what are we trying to get at so, with this conversation? So, so good, three three different things. Number one, mm -hmm. it's t it's really out of bounds for them to write this article. Number okay. two, we don't know what the truth is. Okay. And even if we it's don't like condone, above, Mac right? and Murphy had a really great quote. He, he was like, I'm not a fan of Andrew Huberman, <laughs> but I feel gross reading this article, right? Because they're going after him. And the thing is, like, I'm, I'm just really curious how the rest of the people in that academic sphere are going to rally around. Is Lex Friedman going to shun him? Or is oh, we're going to see a situation where Chris, what, what Chris Williamson Honestly, is going to do? Honestly, I think because, because here's okay. the thing, because I got news for you. When Chris Williamson or Lex Friedman fuck up, they're going to do this to them too. Oh, yeah. And they better recognize this. It's the same thing with Jonah Hill. All the people who stood up for Jonah Hill were part of a political party that Jonah Hill doesn't belong to, so he was never able to acknowledge it. And I'm worried about the same situation with, with Huberman, because when this situation is with the, all the guys that are standing up for him being like, dude, he didn't do anything wrong. They're not part of the same political party that academia is. I don't know what his PR team is like. I don't because I yeah. know he's probably got he has to have people. A guy that big yeah. has to have people, right? So when people are asking, well, how come he hasn't like responded to any of this yet? I'm like, if he has a smart PR team, they won't say jack shit yeah, for exactly. a while. Yeah. Because what they're gonna do is they're gonna make it look bad for New York magazine, which it does now because we're doing shows like this, because people are responding yeah, in the dude, way that yeah. they are. Chill at the house, Andrew. I'll make them look Look bad because they look yes. bad because we're about to make them look yeah, even yeah, fucking yeah, worse. Give, give with your this PR team a raise because you did exactly what you should do. So what's happening is they're looking to see which way sort of like the wind blows as far as as, as public opinion is is concerned. Now here's what's going to happen: it's going to be boys against girls. Yeah. Guys are going to go, "He's a genius. I can't believe he's being a you know pilloried like this." And then there's going to be women who are saying he's a manipulative motherfucker and he's like had six women that he was fucking at the same <laughs> time and he led them on. He was manipulating them. Yada yada yada. And that is where the real story is in the meat of If hypothetically he is manipulating six women, that's wrong. I want you guys to understand, I still think that's wrong. I was looking but, at all but, of the conversations yes. in the Twitter feeds about this. All the women were like, he's a manipulative son yeah. of a bitch, and every dude on there is like, yeah. like why are you digging into his person? Yeah, if he, if he, if he, I'm not saying if that's true, he's not wrong. Number one, we don't know if it's true, but that's not the point. The point is he's not a dating coach, and he's not a Christian yeah. seminary leader. He <laughs> is talking about science. He's talking about wearing a fucking aura ring, Wait, and then putting sun, like like getting some sunlight in your eyes. Like, it's crazy to me. It, I think that yeah. what, not saying at all that the girls are right for saying anything about his personal life, but I think the point that some of the women are trying to make is that you're taking advice from someone who, behind closed doors, is not the mm. person he's alluding himself to be, this healthy, well-rounded, okay. mentally... That's, like, so, that's my so, one critique. So, so, but that's I like a lot of people. I well, that makes sense, but how... It, I'm, like, how is he unhealthy and not getting enough sunlight because of his... Yeah. Well, I mean, do you want to take advice you know from I mean? someone that tells you that the best optimal way of living is a certain way, but behind closed doors, they're manipulative, they're abusive, they're... Like, but who's an honest? Uh, listen, right. listen. Like, listen. Health, I, 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 for health, I, I, yes. Just, for just, dating, I'll get a dating the, coach. But separate that Regardless, separate. regardless, you're still preaching to people how to have a better quality of life. And the kind of person who manipulates and cheats and lies and abuses people is not a healthy, mentally and emotionally sound person. So I think that is the mm -hmm. only component of this that gets led down a different road because A, what happens behind closed doors is his business, but B, if there's no proof of it, then I, I wouldn't even know why they would comment about the abuse. This is so little journey. The, the problem is those six women have every right to talk as much shit about him as they want, just but, not in the fucking New Yorker. That's crazy. Front page on the New Yorker. I mean, Could you imagine the it's cover story? Do you want to know something? The New Yorker but, 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 did but, not but, them. But hold on a second. Let me, let me tell you something else. If I was dating six women at the same time and I got caught, the New Yorker wouldn't write about it because I'm not mm -mm. that popular. You want to know? So not only is the New Yorker doing this to a man who isn't married, they're swagger jacking him because he's the most popular dude in this whole field. No, because it gets them publicity. Okay, do that's what swagger jacking okay, means. Okay, but do you understand? Yeah. Like, it's the same thing as that girl's video that you posted the last time I was here where she's like, I want to get by like 600 people in the bathroom. Yep. Like, obviously, they're jumping on a bandwagon of something that's has no right. Like, I don't know. They just want to be able to say that they had a piece of, I guess, the pie that's being passed out right now. And if it's really not that uh, what deep because no one has had proof yet, then why are we even talking about it? Because it's shitty to, like, 
jab I, at somebody's well, character. Well, like, yeah, but like why are people perpetuating it if they don't have the because proof? Because in the interest of full disclosure, he has talked about relationship stuff. He has talked with Dr. David Buss before. He yeah. has done relationship like podcasts in the past. But so. he, was, he was I don't think he was giving prescriptions. No, was he, he was he, he was doing regardless, interviews. Even if that's not his forte and yeah. that's like the thing that he does the most, he's still out there preaching about having a better, healthy life. So, and you can't be a healthy person if you're a abusive yeah, person. So, so, so I, I don't... I don't see any evidence of the abuse. I see Agreed. Some, That's seven, why I shouldn't I have even some, brought, I see, brought up. I see some evidence that he may have been talking to multiple women at the sure. same time. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing. Um, Albert or Albert Einstein w uh, came up with the theory of relativity and won the uh, the Nobel Prize for the photoelectric effect in 1921, and he's his cousin. <sighs> What? I, I'm sorry. Like, like, should I just stop listening to the what? fucking guy? It doesn't make any difference. Uh, uh, like, what's his face? Um, uh, Isaac Newton invented differential calculus when he was 25 years old and died a virgin. So I just like shouldn't listen to him because he's bad at dating advice. No, if you're right, here's the thing. If you're right, you're right. It doesn't make any difference. That's why I don't have. I don't agree with you on this. If he is coming up with scientific surveys to show a proof, I don't care if he's fucking 12 girls at the same time. Okay. The truth is the truth. If Wait, you're right, you're right. You don't care. Okay. You don't care. But it doesn't mean it's wrong. But it doesn't and mean no he's wrong. one has said to him that none of his stuff is right. I, and I, no actually, one that, that Karen earlier with the jiggly yeah, chin but, said his stuff was wrong. But the Karen with the jiggly She's chin is looking for her 15 minutes as well. For sure. Regardless, everyone knows that he's done more good than bad, right? So I think that right now, the only thing is that you don't care. Like, oh, yeah, you know, he beat the fuck out of this this girl one time. Bro, but if he beat the fuck out of his girlfriend great. and that was proof, that we, this wouldn't even be an article. And it wouldn't be in the New Yorker either. It would be in the I'm, New York Times. I'm saying what you're right. saying is that you don't really care about that component. It's not that... that which I part, think which, this which, is which, fucked which up in general because component? shit gets spun no matter what. So, like, if you weren't physically there to be involved as him right. with these individual girls, you have no idea what their fucking dynamic is. And women are crazy. Trust me, I have nothing but girlfriends, too. No one so will ever like, know except for those two in the room. So, like, That's the crazy it. thing is you can't take what could be his personal for all we know he could be dating through time trying to find a girl that he feels is his perfect match which is pretty much yeah. what you don't is know it's normal. you know what yeah. i mean it's none of our damn fucking business and, and maybe you know let the girls man are dating do other men as well and no, personal there, lives my, are two different my, my, things my let issue, the man create his yeah, livelihood the other issue is you have relationships that go from um, go from exclusive to non-exclusive because you ha you went into a fight. And so maybe one person thinks it's exclusive the other person. I'm not saying that... You guys are speculating. We don't have to justify why he had more than one girl at the same time. That's sure. his business. The only thing that I keep saying to you that matters to me is that when you said this is what we're going to be talking about, the one vague thing that I saw, the one article that I saw said that he was very, very unfaithful and that he was abusive behind closed doors. So the component of being abusive and not a stand-up guy is the only thing that matters to me in this conversation. If there is no proof of him being abusive, and no one's actually coming out and saying, like, because there's so, 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 that article. So, we should, so what we should do is look at the article and see if there's any proof about how the article was written. Do you have any proof about that? I can, or who uh, even yeah, wrote got, it. It I, could be I some got, fucking cigar angry, cigar crazy ex who's writing one. it. Yeah. And then you have it one-sided. Just cigar. because somebody writes something and it's their opinion doesn't make it fact. Wait, yeah. you know, And yet people will hang to anything negative to believe it because it makes them feel better. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Lauren. So, absolutely. I just want to say, I feel like as a society, we've kind of been like desensitized to this. But just because a man isn't married, I still feel like cheating, cheating is, is bad. bad yeah. Like I don't. Wanna... I agree with you. Cheating is bad. My point yeah. is, but is it New it, New Yorker? No, no, no. The no, front I'm page of the New Yorker. Note, side yeah. note. You got to set that up with the, the New Yorker. Yorker. Stop telling us. Like, like <laughs> new someone. Way that's why. The conversation has been going is. He's not married. We shouldn't be talking about this because he's not married. But just we need to realize the society that it's we're creating. Yeah. Like. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's not because he's not married. I think we shouldn't be talking about this because it's not our business. I think that's yeah. the issue. That's not the focus that we should be worried about. By the way, because the, what you focus on is what grows. Yeah. Right? That's I. That's what I believe. Yeah. So we, if you want to put all your focus on. You know yeah. that one main and component. To it's just on that like one let's thing. let us you know. So and the reason why we're talking about it today is because this is someone that Jesse, you guys have listened to. You're probably gonna want to hear this. You guys have listened to, and you guys are you guys are basically like not fans but supporters of yeah. who he is. So well, even if I, even if I, I, I know who, people, who yeah. you've known him to be. E even anyway. if I wasn't like again, Mac and Murphy, he's not a supporter of him. It just feels gross that they did this. Right. Can you can you pull, pull that up? Yeah. 
Before I get started, I want to get a few things out of the way. First is, I'm biased in the story I'm about to cover. Dr. Andrew Huberman, he's a personal friend to the point we've exchanged texts, phone calls, we've met in person. A lot of my anger around this is of seeing my friend smeared, but I'm also going to try and fuse my personal outrage at an injustice to a friend with some journalistic rigor and expose what I believe to be a genuine hit job that has bigger cultural implications. Let's start with the smear job itself. New York Magazine, which is a subsidiary of Vox Media, published a front page story on on Monday morning titled Falling for Dr. Huberman, the private and public seductions of the world's biggest pop neuroscientist. Now you might expect the story to detail perhaps some health lies or bad advice possibly that was proven from the most popular health podcast in the world. And you open up that story, you find 8,000 words. After reading them all, you will come away with this information. Dr. Andrew Huberman, who is unmarried, engaged in simultaneous relationships with up to six women, according to his ex-girlfriends and lovers. I'm not kidding. And if you want, you can read the entire piece for yourself. It exhaustively details a lead up of how Huberman has self-admitted to therapy and a tough childhood, then immediately begins to parse in detail the scurrilous allegations of his ex-girlfriends who apparently have formed their own group chat to try and take him down. What is crazier is what I then found out by asking those behind the scenes. Now, according to those familiar with New York Magazine's original reach out to Dr. Huberman, the vibe started out quite a bit different. The New York Magazine's original email which I obtained and is so unbelievable that I was given permission to read a few quotes for you here on the show, is in August of 2023, New York Magazine reporter Carrie Howley emailed saying, quote, I am writing in the hopes that one of my big stories this year might be the phenomenon of Dr. Andrew Huberman. When my editor suggested I look into him, I basically shot him down. It didn't seem like the kind of thing I would be into. I listened to a single episode, predictably months later, I'm fully addicted and devoted. She adds, continues, due to some of the episodes that deal with stress, I'm taking care of my mental health. It was almost like I couldn't engage or become interested until Dr. Huberman made it all profoundly concrete and chemical. I know I'm far from the only person to have experienced this change. She adds a few more buttery things about how much she loved the podcast, and she said and got no reply. Now, the story should have died there, right? No, 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 no. Suddenly, the Huberman love affair turned into something very different. Months later, those familiar say that Huberman's colleagues, his family, and his friends from high school began to be inundated with emails from New York Magazine requesting anonymous information on Dr. Huberman. One of the emails reads as follows. Subject line, off the record conversation with New York Mag. Email text, quote, in the interest of trans- transparency, there have been serious allegations made about Andrew as well as the academic work that he is up to these days. Now, hold on a second. What serious allegations that he was not faithful to his girlfriend? Why is that pertinent to speak to his colleagues about? And what about his work at Stanford? What are you talking about? Here it turns out nothing. Despite the author's best efforts to smear Andrew Huberman's work at Stanford and presenting him as some no-show at his own lab, insinuating that something was afoot because of its transition, Stanford itself stood up for him in the piece saying his lab was fully operational, nothing she she was insinuating was true. As for these quote, serious allegations, again, literally, it is from his personal life. And where did these allegations come from? Well, it doesn't take a genius to see that the sources of this story are jilted lovers of Andrew Huberman's. And it appears, based upon my conversations again with those familiar, that the reporter was able to make contact with them by literally trolling for negative comments on Reddit threads and Instagram comments. So the timeline is basically this. She asked for a profile and pretended to be a fan. He said no, or basically didn't reply. Then she connects with these jilted lovers, leaving anonymous comments on the internet. Then those claims, including incorrect ones about his work at Stanford, are presented to colleagues, friends, and family of Huberman's, including his own father, to react to. Any positive comments attesting to his character were not included in the story. The full allegations of the women were printed with complete credibility, even though many have existed exhibited some pretty crazy behavior in their retaliation against him. So those are the specifics of how this all came to be. But let me just put this aside right now and just say this. Let's say every word of it is true, every last word. 
What is the relevance of any of this? Not once in this story did they ever dispute a single word that Andrew Huberman ever said on his podcast. Not once did they prove that he is less than he says he is, including the fact that Stanford University publicly confirms that he remains not only a professor, but one who continues to publish research and teach students at this university. Not once were they able to prove misinformation, malinformation, whatever you want to call it. This is not a story. It is a character assassination of, yes, who a man who is my friend, but a man who I believe has changed millions of lives for the better. Andrew Huberman does not tell you to do anything. He gives you information that you can research and check for yourself. He gives you protocols like look in the sun in the morning if you want to sleep better, avoid alcohol, and by and large to try and live a healthier lifestyle. Or he will interview a world-renowned scholar on the subject, and he will draw out information that might be relevant to you, if you want it to be. As far as I'm concerned, that's the only thing that's relevant about him. And if they could find anything he said regarding that which is wrong or was malicious, I'm all ears and I wouldn't be doing anything like this. They didn't. That's why I'm doing this monologue. Because this was an attempt, for some reason or the other, to take him down for just simply being the most popular health podcaster in the world. He doesn't have to rely on mainstream media to get this information. And I guess that alone is his crime, for which he has now been sentenced and convicted in the court of public opinion by New York Magazine. It is not right. And if you ever benefited from his advice, you should share this with people you know, so the actual truth gets out there. Crystal, there we go. What- well, I think it's kind of cool because that answers our question right there. Like, why hasn't he said anything? This is exactly why. Because now his PR can, they can win off of this, and it's a publicity. Well, that, that's not his PR. I mean, that's not his well, PR. Not him, it's his but friend. I'm just saying, like, but- later on when he does say something, it's like, you know, just imagine, though, if I'm, I'm, I'm trying to write an article about you and I'm like, hey, I'm just a huge fan of all your music, blah, blah, blah. I just tell you all these lies and then just come up and then start accosting your family members so that I can like w- what yeah, I'm saying is. So two, two things. Number one, she, he, he said correctly. They did not contend anything he said medically. Remember Karen up there saying, mm-hmm. I said this guy was a grifter. Mm-hmm. Right. You remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the issue. So like turns out he wasn't a grifter. None of the nothing she said was true. And then additionally, when we go back to the other part, it's like. Um, we're sitting there like talking about his whole life when they pretended to not do a hit piece on him. And they actually the entire just imagine if somebody was like, hey, Michael, I want you to come on my podcast. Uh, and then I go on there and then they just start showing like as soon as I get on, it's like a live stream. And they're like, here's your tax records and blah, blah, blah. Like complete. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. That's the issue. This was absolutely a hit piece. And what, my, what I'm saying is there's supposed to be some level of journalistic integrity in this country, and yeah, that is none. Sure. Your journalistic integrity are his ex-girlfriends. Congratulations, bro. Pulitzer <laughs> Prize for you. That's incredible. Anyway, so that's, that's what I thought about. I was just gonna, let me, let me uh, throw in a couple of disclaimers into all of this really quickly here. First off is you got to remember he has a type. That's number one. The, between, like, say, 38 and 43 or somewhere around. Uh, the I've read the article, read it a couple times. Uh, when he, they are describing the kind of girl that he likes to be, to to date, that he wants to be with, uh, they all follow this. Oh, she's very. They repeat this over and over. She's very intelligent. She's very empowered. She's very strong. She one of the the main girl has like two kids, and she, he was like a little concerned that about her fertility because he wants to have kids as well. Um, and you know she's. 43, so she's pushing into the perimenopause area right there. So I, I, honestly, I can understand why he would be concerned with something like that. But he's juggling. He's basically spinning six plates at the same time, right? And uh, the one, the one. If I have a criticism for him, first of all, it's, it's the, if those women are as intelligent and as, as empowered as the as the article says. They didn't know that this is Andrew fucking Huberman. <laughs> they didn't know that this guy is jacked at like 48, 49 years old and is the number one number one podcaster in his niche and is just, a, a, you know, just an amazing individual to begin with. Do you not think that there will be other women that would be yeah. like in some way interested with this guy? Mm-hmm. So that's 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 number one. Um, number two is this is if I can find one fault in Andrew Huberman is that he was not above board about it. Now, I we got a pickup artist right here, um, and I know that in the past I have talked about spinning plates as well, but one of the things that I talk about when I, I say men need to date non-exclusively is you need to be above board with it. You need to do the opposite of what Huberman was doing, which is trying to juggle or spin six plates at the same time yeah. and trying to essentially – I think what, what a lot of women would like to – would like is in the New York uh, New Yorker here – would like people to believe is that this is the new Tinder swindler. That this is the guy mm. who has all these chicks that he's just stringing along and they're they're taking out bank loans for him and everything. Now, maybe not to that extreme, 
But if you could turn Andrew Huberman into the Tinder swindler, that sells magazines. That's going to sell a story. Mm. My only concern with all of this is, and I understand there's going to be somebody going to say, well, it's his integrity. It's his character. So does that in any way damage the information that he's delivering? No, mm -mm. it doesn't. But mm. do you now look at him? That he's going to be looked at in a different light now. And I was one of the reasons I titled this episode, you know, Andrew Huberman needs the red pill is because he should have just simply been above board. You're Andrew fucking Huberman, right? Tiger Woods got screwed because he was married and he was trying to, you know, try to keep it all under the table all the time. Instead of just saying, you know what, I'm going to divorce my wife. This is not the lifestyle that I, I want to be in now because I realize that I'm Tiger fucking Woods, right? He is Andrew Huberman. And I would say that probably, and this is just me speculating right here, is... This is a guy who was a Stanford professor for the longest time, didn't have anything near the kind of popularity and the fame that he has right now. That's, mm. He's a household name, mm. okay? And also, good-looking guy, older. He is the archetype of the guy that women of that age bracket, of that demographic, would love to marry. Their ship has come in, their prince yeah. in, their, in shining armor has, has finally come in, <laughs> and they want to believe in the fairy tale, Aww. just like the women on Tinder Swindler wanted to believe in the fairy tale. Yeah. So now you've got this guy who is, he's hes Hercules for fuck's sake. I mean, he's a demigod and he's got these six women. The only thing he fucked up on is he just should have been above board with just it. Just told the truth. Yeah, he honest, just should have just yeah. tell the, the truth. The thing is like, this is me and this is how I like to live my life. But I'm maybe done. he did tell the truth. Well, he, might the, have. He, he could have. I think, like, the, I think the issue is well, well, sometimes when guys will do this, I'm, I'm not talking about him specifically, but in general, guys will say Say, I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you, because they don't want you, the girl, to sleep with other guys. You. No, they want other guys to sleep with you, right? So it's like, it's one thing to date six women. I mean, we all know a fucking male stripper or VIP host in the city has dated six women at the same time. The issue is, in those cases, they're not pretending like they're, well, actually they are. I'm sorry, it's a bad example. Uh, the, well, you know. I was going to say, the, the other part of this is that he probably went from zero to hero, right? Yeah, that's like, exactly right. It's, yeah. it's, uh, it's what I call too young, too, uh, too much, too young, too fast, right? Now, is he too young? It's not about being youthful. It's you're new to this newfound fame, right? So if you take, for instance, you look at, like, say, uh, Dr. Jordan Peterson. Before 2017, he was just this obscure professor at the University of Ontario or Toronto, wherever he was at, probably making about eighty to hundred thousand dollars a year in his teaching position in in Canada, and goes from that to making eighty thousand dollars a month on Patreon alone. Sells out worldwide. He's probably worth probably eight or ten million dollars right now. Goes from nothing from zero to hero too much too young too fast and what happens he carries on his his benzo addiction and becomes sort of a basket case has to go to rehab has to reinvent himself afterwards because he's not ready for the fame he's not ready for he's he's taking his old way of thinking and his old order mentality into now i've got 10 million dollars so if you apply the same sort of dynamic to andrew huberman the guy is a stanford person still very high status don't get me wrong but not as high status as he is now, you know, on the cover of freaking New York Magazine, right? So you've got a guy who probably still is in his head thinking, I want to do things the right way. Well, the right way is to date one woman at one time and that's it, right? Just, just one monogamous, you know, perfect world, right? Well, then he realizes, I'm Andrew fucking Huberman. I can have this chick too. Oh, and this one, and this one, and on down till I got six yeah, of them, well, and I'm well, trying to well, spin I, six plates well, at the same time. I don't even I, think it's I can have this one too. I think it's more like he's never experienced. I just don't think ladies understand. Maybe you would. Maybe if your dream actor came to you while you were in a committed relationship, and you could just get away with it, and nobody would know. But imagine that times 17 because men have all this fucking testosterone and I just don't think people understood so I can actually understand one or, or maybe two if he actually was lying to all six that's a foul mm -hmm. but the thing is it's still nobody's business anybody have, you have, Cosmo? I mean I mean Rolo you open so many points for me right now mm -hmm. right, I, I'm, I'm, on, I'm, I'm honestly very confused mm -hmm. on how this is even talked about right now because I don't think it's subtle at all mm -hmm. and I think like what Mike was saying is a hit case it's very obvious and I think it's clickbait and I'm still confused on what he actually did wrong. I'm sorry if I, I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, I, in, in the story, so he's, he's that telling he's multiple women. Right? Yeah, he's saying, you're, okay, my, so girlfriend, how, you're how my girlfriend, you're my girlfriend, you're my girlfriend. His, right. future, so, his future forecasting with six individual yeah. Right, and I think you nailed it. It's very, like, what is he doing wrong? The only thing that he did wrong was try to be very discreet and try to, you know, social conformity. Be like, mm -hmm. this is what people perceive me as, so I'm going to go ahead in this direction. What Tony Robbins did was genius when he... Um, dropped that documentary, I'm Not Your Guru. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a brilliant move for him to tell people, I'm not fucking perfect. 
I'm not your guru. Yeah. There is a sense of freedom of, of just being like, okay, this is not like I'm a human being. And yeah. like what Mike was saying, I'm teaching you how to do all these things. Mm-hmm. What does it have to do with my dating life? Mm-hmm. I feel like what his PR team is doing right now is absolutely genius. Mm-hmm. Don't respond. Let the people respond on how you're going to uh, be perceived. If you are as good as you think you are and you're helping people, people like Mike Sartain Roller, you're going to do a podcast, you're going to spend 30 minutes talking about it, defending him. Therefore, I think it's genius what he's doing. The fact that he hasn't reacted, they haven't done any statements is a great move. Mike, if somebody comes up to me and says, I hate your red hair, how am I going to react? I'd be like, bro, what are you talking about? Like, I'm not going to have no reaction. Yeah, like, I have no red hair. So I think how he's reacting mm-hmm. right now is perfect. Yeah. It's go ahead, talk your shit. And if I help people, then let them talk for me. And yeah. that's the move he's doing right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm just really interested because the people who are defending him are not on the same side of the aisle that the academics at Stanford are. So I'm curious, like, how that whole thing is going to work. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anybody else? I just, go ahead. The only thing that I'm going to touch on is I agree with everything that you guys are saying. If he's not really doing anything abusive or anything, that's his business to handle. No one expects him to be the most perfect person on the planet. What I will say is, how many times have you heard a woman come out in the more recent years? Oh, this happened with this person, Mm -hmm. but they couldn't say anything. And they couldn't give full details. Mm -hmm. Nickelodeon, Epstein, a lot of stuff kept coming out. Little by little. So you don't know if this is going to turn into one of those things. Sure. This was a little tiny bit that they could give at the moment, but they were too scared mm. of what might happen in the future. That's the only thing that I would say keep your eye on. Well, Other than that, it's not anyone's business what happens with his dating life. It sucks if he's that kind of person, but it's not front page of the fucking news worthy, and that's for sure. And to try and knock down all the good he's done, that's stupid. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, yes, it doesn't mean that he should not be like kept under <laughs> under an eyes watch because it's been in history already that women have said hey you, this is happening and another girl say hey this is happening and everyone's like oh shut up oh oh just you know want you 15 minutes of fame and it comes out that these are really abusive nasty people behind so, closed so doors so here's the thing I, I i agree and let's just say hypothetically everything in there is true then they need to file a civil suit i'm still not in favor you don't of know what was said to them to right. make them scared and not come forward you don't know what was done you don't know what Got was it. okay like that's some fair. people that's fair. fear you for their, their that, families that, or for themselves you don't, you don't know okay uh, you want to do the Mac and Murphy one? Uh, I, let me get I, to Super Chats. And if we okay. don't know, that's why we should Because the Mac and Murphy one, I, I picked that one just for Jesse. Oh, jeez. What? What? Uh, what? what? Uh, I got Lewis for nine ninety nine. Thanks. Uh, women can be degenerates with a roster, but a scientist that does the same is crossing the line. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> uh, Eric, thanks for that nine ninety nine. That said nothing. And <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Eric Trumbull, uh, should false accusers go to jail? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. 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 Hashtag Amber Heard. I, I, I disagree. <laughs> they should be charged with the crimes and the punishment that would have been applied to the guy that they are falsely. Do you, do you know? You like we have it right in the UCMJ Law you, of Hammurabi. No, the U, Universal <laughs> univer, uh, the Universal Code of Military Justice, Uniform Code of Military Justice. If you accuse an officer or your commanding officer of a crime and you do not have it ev- evidence, you go to jail. I really wish we did this in relationships and with other stuff like this. It'd be absolutely incredible. Instead, you have to like spend $50,000 a month on defamation attorneys right. to try to maybe get somebody to stop talking shit about you. 